He was already 30 years old when he set out on his ministry. The name Jesus was a common one at the time. People in his hometown didn't see him as a great preacher or anything else very special. In fact, they ran him out of town the very first time he returned home. To some, he was seen as a prophet, to others a miracle worker and a healer. To the religious establishment of the day, he was a challenge to their authority. Then, as his popularity grew, there was talk of him being the promised Messiah, even the Son of God. He traveled the countryside with the 12 main disciples, though others followed close behind. He would preach his truths to one person face to face, or to 5,000 on the hillside. Woven into his teachings, there came more and more talk about his own death, first in shrouded terms, then ever more clearly. For centuries, a prophet who was anybody was bound to end up in the holy city, Jerusalem. The road to Jerusalem drew Jesus like a magnet. I will drive out demons and heal people today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I will reach my goal. In any case, I must keep going today and tomorrow and the next day. For surely, no prophet could die outside Jerusalem. Jesus of Nazareth. Shut 
He had walked the countryside for three years, preaching and teaching and performing miracles. Eyewitnesses reported him giving sight to the blind and cleansing people who suffered from leprosy, the dreaded disease of the skin. The closer Jesus of Nazareth came to Jerusalem, the more his fame and following grew. By the time he reached the city's gates, a huge throng followed as resin residents of the city went out to meet him. When he came near the place where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Luke, the physician. Hosanna.
was Passover in the city, and thousands had turned up to celebrate the holy day in the holiest of cities. Jesus directed two of his disciples to prepare for the Passover meal. Jesus told John and me to go meet a man carrying a jar of water and say to him, the teacher asks you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He showed us a large room upstairs in his house. There, as the master had directed, we prepared the Passover meal. Simon Peter of Galilee. After the Passover meal, Jesus took a few of his disciples with him to the Garden of Gethsemane. For Jesus, this was the crossroads of his life and ministry, both figuratively and literally. Gethsemane was located at the edge of Jerusalem. He could return to the city where leaders plotted against his life, or leave Jerusalem and return to the freedom and fame he had experienced in the countryside. The decision was a matter of life and death, and Jesus struggled intensely as he prayed. Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. We 
The road to the cross would lead first to the high priest and the Sanhedrin, the seat of religious power in Jerusalem. After hours of interrogation, full of verbal and physical abuse, they were determined to have him put to death. To do so, they would need to convince the seat of Roman law that Jesus was a threat to the government. They took him to Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor. Pilate hardly wanted to become entangled in a fray on Jewish doctrine. However, he agreed to listen to the charges against Jesus. I gave this man, this Jesus of Nazareth, every opportunity to demonstrate his innocence. Instead, he hardly spoke, neither preaching nor defending himself against the trumped-up charges. The man was clearly innocent, and I tried just to have him punished and released. This caused an uproar, and I was getting nowhere. So, to quiet the crowd, I washed my hands of the whole affair and handed him over to be crucified. What is one man's life? for the price of peace and quiet. Pontius Pilate. Before Jesus was taken to be crucified, Pilate had him flogged. Then, to add a little theatrical flair to the crowd, the soldiers put a crown of thorns and a purple robe on him. Some were amused, some aghast, but many were simply curious to witness the spectacle of this execution. Those closest to Jesus were devastated. I have never felt more sadness than at that moment at the cross. The sight of his tortured body, the blood, the wails of the women, and the shock and desperation on his mother's face will never leave my memory. The tears of his mother were almost more than I could bear. John, son of Zebedee. Followers of Jesus looked on in bewilderment. Some had left everything to follow this man from Nazareth. They had seen him before miracles and thought he had come to Jerusalem to establish a new kingdom. Now they watched in disbelief as the one they called Lord was taken and nailed to a cross.
though men were known to suffer for days before dying on a cross. It took a mere six hours before Jesus started to falter. After saying goodbye to his mother, he let out a loud groan and died. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. us through grace and who will transform us into glory. Bless you this day and always. 